This is my boat. She's called APX and I designed and built her from scratch because I want to set the world electric water speed record. She's unlike any boat you've ever seen. And in this video, I get to show you what this is all about. Now, this boat is not a record breaker. She's a prototype. Her mission is to teach me about this whole business of speed on water, about boats in general, and validate some key design points that I think are going to make this project possible. She's 14 foot long, fully electric, and she's got a design speed of 60 miles an hour. Now, right now, the fastest electric boat in the world is a modified racing hydroplane called Big Bird, and she was built by a team of students at Princeton University. She uses a really powerful electric outboard motor, and she set the record at 114.2 miles per hour. Now, what I'm trying to do is to come up with a design for a record breaker that is able to do 200 miles an hour. And that's a really serious speed on water. So there's big challenges that have to be overcome. The point of this design is to do three things. We want to minimize the drag from the water. We want to minimize the drag from the air. And we want to keep the boat stable and under control at all times. To minimize the drag from the water, basically, we've got to keep as much of the boat out of it as we can. Essentially, we just want the boat to skim across the top of the water, and that kind of boat is called a hydroplane. At speed with this design, only the rear part of these two white planing surfaces and the very back of the hull are actually making contact with the surface of the water. There's also a razor-sharp stabilizing fin at the back, to help it go in a straight line. And that's the only part that at speed is actually in the water itself. Everything else is out of it. Now the aerodynamic drag is about minimizing frontal area, keeping the boat as smooth as possible and having as few sticky out bits that create drag as possible. It's really basically an aeroplane fuselage, but without the wings. And all of my experience comes from the aeroplane world. So that's all right. The really hard bit is keeping the boat stable and controllable. So here's what I've done. Aerodynamically, the boat is stable. That is to say, the center of pressure is just behind the center of mass. Here, just behind there. So the boat wants to stay level and it wants to go in a straight line. That's what that big wing there is for. The reason it's hard to go fast on water is because it has waves on it. It would be so much easier if it didn't, but there's nothing we can do about that. Obviously, a boat like mine is designed to only go out in very calm conditions, but you can never count on perfectly still water. So I've put suspension on it. It's a bit like a car when a wave hits the front planing surfaces. Instead of tipping the entire boat up and down, it compresses a shock absorber. Now, this system adds a lot of aerodynamic drag, so I've kept it to the front planing surfaces only where it's most important. But this, in conjunction with the inherent aerodynamic stability of the boat, should help it stay stable and planted at speed. To address the elephant in the room, APX has an air propeller. It might seem weird to some of you because I said before her design speed is 60 miles an hour. Well, basically, what I've worked out is that at 200 miles an hour, an air propulsion system like this one is more efficient than a water propulsion system. At that speed, an air propeller or a fan can maintain an efficiency of 60 to 70 percent, whereas cavitation causes a water propeller to drop in efficiency. I promise I've seriously looked into this, but I've not been able to find a design for a water propeller, even a super cavitating or a surface piercing one, that can maintain an efficiency above 50% at 200 miles an hour. Now, obviously, with my boat at 60 miles an hour, a water propeller would almost certainly be more efficient than what I've got now. But the point of this is to test this concept for 200 miles an hour. My boat uses a 100 volt system fed by two lithium polymer batteries. This drives a 25 kilowatt electric motor. This isn't actually a whole lot of power, so it's really important that the boat be as efficient as possible if it's going to go fast. Getting to this design took me a year, during which I've done a lot of experiments with scale models. I built lots of models of many different designs, starting with the one you see here. At the beginning, I was very much inspired by a boat called Crusader, piloted by John Cobb, which could have smashed the world water speed record in 1952, if not for terrible structural problems, which caused its destruction 
during a record attempt. Uh, Cobb is one of my heroes, though, and his boat was absolutely revolutionary. So it was definitely a bit of an inspiration for me. I'm not going to get too far into the weeds of the models in this video. Please let me know if you're interested in knowing more about what I've done with them. But eventually, I arrived at design you see here, and this one has been fantastic. I've run many, many tests with it, and it became very clear very quickly that this was a very promising design. I was very lucky as well to be able to put it in the University of Southampton's 7x5 wind tunnel, which returned some really interesting data on drag coefficients and aerodynamic stability. In the tunnel, we also did a thing called Flovis, and this is a really cool technique where you use a powder pigment mixed with a liquid that will evaporate, in this case it was kerosene, and you spray it onto the model and then you turn on the wind. The airflow pushes the liquid around, and so it reveals what the air is doing on the surface of the model. But the kerosene dries up very quickly, so then you can take the model out and you have a sort of snapshot of what the air was doing at that moment. A big part of this is structural design. Even with the shock absorbers, the boat has to survive serious forces at speed. I'm not going to get into the details of the construction in this video, but basically the boat is built from gaboon, marine, plywood and carbon fibre. There's some 3D printed parts for non-structural components and glass fibre as well. And inside of the hull, there are primary structures made out of aluminium, for example, where the front planing surfaces attach to the hull. So then, what's next? Well, we've already completed low speed testing on the Solent, checking for water ingress in the hull, making sure the electric systems all work, and also looking at the steering. The rudder on APX is actually aerodynamic. It's not making use of the water to steer the boat. It's making use of the air coming out of the fan. And I'm really happy to say everything went very well. She steers just fine. So now what the boat needs is a proper custom made fan designed specifically for her instead of the three bladed UAV propeller I've got on there right now. And that will allow her to make enough thrust to really start getting up to speed. Hopefully we'll have that done in the next few weeks. Watch out for more videos on APX. There's definitely really exciting things coming soon. If you'd like to get in touch with me, my contact info is in the description. You can also check out my website. I've got my own engineering consulting business where I design and build prototypes for people to help them validate their ideas. So do get in touch if that's something that interests you. All right, bye now.